Shalom and welcome. The Hebrew Israelite movements, all the sects, racist groups, and those who are more on the logical side, I hope that this video will be helpful in demonstrating that the Jewish people, my people, Israel, the southern tribe of Judah, that we are the true Jews who have always been here since the beginning of time. Now the accusation that has been made in all sorts of videos is that the real Jews have been lost and now they're rediscovering their original roots and that we, the real Jews, stole their identity and stole the land of Israel. What are the facts behind this? I hope by the end of this video you will understand that this whole theology, which is only a couple decades old, is nonsense, lies, and against the Torah itself. So, before I begin, I want to let you know that below the screen, here where you're watching me, below the screen in the description box, just click the bottom triangle, I will leave links to articles of the information I'm going to give, the evidence that we are the same Jews and we have always been the Jews. So, I hope you'll check the sources. Let's begin with scripture, because that's the most important. That should come first and last. Scripture is the only thing that's the bottom line. A lot of these sects, if not maybe 99% of these sects, are very racist and vile and filthy mouthed, who speak the most abominations that have ever been heard from any group or cult, and yet claim to be representing God. Exodus chapter 23 verse 9 says, considering that they only believe that Israel is worthy of salvation, and even the ones who don't believe this, listen up carefully. Exodus 23 verse 9, you shall not oppress the stranger. In Hebrew, it's called ger. There is no way around this. It does not mean sojourner. It does not mean alien. It does not mean a Hebrew Israelite that's about to convert. No, it means stranger. Ger in Hebrew means stranger. It would be very helpful if you start learning Hebrew instead of filthy language. You know the heart of the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Yes, Israel was strangers in the land of Egypt. It hurts their racist agenda when they realize what the scripture actually says. Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 18. He, meaning God, executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the strangers, giving him food and clothing. And then verse 19. Therefore, love the strangers, the ger, the ger, which means the non-Israelites. Love the strangers. This is God speaking, not me, God. Therefore, for you were strangers, again, in the land of Egypt. What about this whole Edomite crap that we're hearing all over the place? Edomite this, Edomite that. Let's see what the, what the Torah says about the Edomites. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. You shall not mistreat an Edomite. Why is this? It says, for he is your brother. Some people, some of the Hebrew Israelites will say, that's not what it means. Really? We'll start learning Hebrew and then you can tell me what it means. I don't need to go to a concordance. I can go straight to the Hebrew. The next line says, you shall not mistreat also the Egyptian because you were a stranger in his land. Therefore, the children born to them, Edomites, in the third generation may enter into the assembly of the Lord. Hmm. Again, racism, hate, it's all about color. It's all about skin tone. That's all they care about. That's the basis of their whole foundation. Racism, bottom line. Whether they're the loud mouths or the silent type, it doesn't matter. Bottom line, racism. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. The first known attack of racism here and bigotry. Here we go. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moshe because of the Cushite woman, the Hamitic Cush woman, black woman, whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman, or Ethiopian, dark-skinned woman, Ham Cush. That's the origins of the black man. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12, since we're so focused on race, this is the disgusting part. Real Israel, the real Israel, meaning the Jews, 
Ethiopians, Samaritans, Karaites, we all love each other. No matter what color we are, we all love each other. Yet, you guys teach hate and filth and racism. This is what it says here. Since we're going to play this race garbage, let's read here. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12. And he sent and brought him in, meaning Solomon. Now, he was ruddy. Now, listen carefully, those who don't know Hebrew. You want to play games? You're not going to play games with my Bible. Hebrew says admoni. Learn Hebrew. Admoni means red. Blush. Red. It does not mean black. Learn Hebrew. Then you could tell me what it means. And of a beautiful countenance and handsome. If that's not enough, the Song of Solomon, 5 verse 10, chapter 5 verse 10. My beloved is radiant and ruddy. Admoni. Red. Distinguished among 10,000. More details. Verse 11. His head is the finest of gold. His locks are wavy. Verse 12. His eyes are like doves beside streams of water. What color is water? Well, I'm sure it was blue back then. Bathed in milk, sitting beside a full pool. His cheeks are like beds of spices, mounds of sweet-smelling herbs. His lips are like the lilies, dripping liquid myrrh. You see how disgusting this is? I have to focus on this because that's all you guys deal with is race. Here I'm pointing out, if you want to deal with this, I could be very blunt and show you what it actually says. Now you want to reverse it on me. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12. Again with the red and ruddy. It says it right there. Red and ruddy. Admoni. Again, learn Hebrew. The Israelites as well are called red and ruddy. Over and over. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, again, for this whole thing that only the Israelites are going to be saved. And it's all about the Israelites. Only the Israelites. Even the ones who don't believe in the hatred and just believe, okay, we're not going to yell in the streets. We just believe that we're the Israelites. And the nations are going to join too, but they're not going to have the high stature like we are. Well, that's not what the scripture says. Hebrew scriptures, scriptures say, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 and onward, says, It shall come to pass in the end of days... That the mountain of the house of Yehovah shall be established as the highest of the mountains, shall be lifted up above the hills. All the nations shall flow to it, and many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yehovah, to the house of the God of Jacob. For what? To become slaves? No, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of Yehovah from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn of war anymore. That's not enough. Of course it's not. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 3. Let the stranger, the ger, in Hebrew again, ger means non-Israelite, that has joined himself to Yehovah, let him not say, Yehovah has utterly separated me from his people. Don't say that. Verse 4. For thus says Yehovah to the Enoch that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant, even to them will I give my house within my walls a place and a better name than the sons and daughters. Verse 7. Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house, listen carefully, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. All peoples. Not just one. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 33. When a stranger lives among you in the land, you shall not do him wrong. A non-Israelite, again, ger means non-Israelite, a stranger, does not mean someone who's going to convert to Hebrew Israelite that knows he's an Israelite. does not mean that. It means a literal stranger, period. 34, verse 34, you shall treat the ger as a native among you. A native is someone who's been in the land before you, just like the Native Americans were there before the so-called Americans came and stole the land from the Native Americans. 
That's what they were to be treated like. That means the strangers are to be treated like the natives among Israel, period. And then it goes on. And you shall love him as yourself, as yourself. For you were strangers in Egypt. I am Yehovah. Leviticus chapter 24, verse 22. You shall have one Torah for the stranger and one for the citizen, meaning you. Numbers chapter 15, verse 16. You and the stranger shall have the same Torah, period. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 10. Do not oppress the widow, the orphan, or the gare, the strangers, or the poor. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 5. I will draw near for judgment against those oppressing the orphans, the widows, and the gare, the strangers. So all of you big mouths out there who are talking trash, speaking these abominations to the nations, speaking evil, judgment's coming for you. Next on the list, any of you Hebrew Israelites who believe that the Greek scriptures makes you Hebrew has got mental problems. You really do. The Greek Testament has nothing to do with anything Hebrew. Those books were put together in Rome. It's Greco-Roman paganism put together there by the church fathers. The whole non, I call it the non-testament, was put together by the year 367. That's when they finally came together. The Catholic Church put together these books in 367. His name was Athanasius. Look it up. I'm not making this up. Look it up for yourself. Athanasius. He decided that these are the final books of the Christian Bible and nothing else. These books have nothing to do with God. The number one thing that a real Israelite must live by is the code. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Shema Israel, Yehovah Eloheinu, Yehovah Echad, which means, Hear, O Israel, Yehovah is our Elohim, Yehovah is one. There is no other. Who is true Israel? Isaiah 43, verses 10 through 11. You are my witnesses, declares Yehovah, that's Israel, and my servant, Isaiah 53, for you New Testament readers. No, the servant is Israel, not the Messiah. Isaiah 53. You are my witnesses, plural, and my servant, singular, Israel. That, why? How do you know you're real Israel? That, you may know and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. I, I am Yehovah, and besides me, there is no stranger. Period. So if you have two saviors, which you guys declare using your fake Hebrew names to declare your glory to the father and his son. No, real Israelite has one savior and that's Yehovah and him alone. So therefore, all you New Testament Hebrew Israelites, gone, gone out the door. Now we're dealing with just the ones who follow Tanakh alone. Our scripture, which we put together. None of the Hebrew Israelites, not one sect, can write a Torah scroll, ever. Never. They steal all our items, our holy items. Steal our clothing, our items, our artifacts, everything. Stolen. Our language, everything. And pose as trying to be us. Write your own scrolls. I dare you. It's never going to happen. Let's go on. The claim is that the fake Jews, which would be us, we're in a land that doesn't belong to us. They claim in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, the Lord shall take thee in ships as slaves. You will be going back to the land of Egypt as slaves, as bondmen and bondswomen. And they say, aha, we got you there. When have you ever been in slave ships? Only we have been in slave ships. Egypt is America. <laughs> There's a big problem with that statement and that belief. What is the problem? Is that we fulfilled that 
in the year 70. Oh yes, we fulfilled it perfectly. Egypt is not America. Now, if you're returning to Egypt, listen carefully. If you're returning to Egypt, that means if Egypt is America, that means you're returning to America again? So are you saying now that you were in America and then Africa and then America? I'd love to hear an explanation to that. Josephus and all historians, if you do your research, again, in the description box, I will leave the details right below this video. Click it. You'll see the links. Josephus and all historians tell you what happened after the second temple was destroyed. We were taken as slaves in ships. Yes, ships. To Egypt as slaves. Now, a lot of people have said, why would you go in ships when you could just walk to Egypt? It's so close. Because that's not how Rome worked. They did not want to go walking through the desert to Egypt. It's better and easier at that time, if you know the ancient world, which you don't, don't know the land, it's easier at that time to take ships. That's what they did. So the information will be down below. Yes, we were taken to Egypt as slaves, and nobody wanted to buy us. That's what the prophecy says, Deuteronomy 28, 68. No one will buy you. You will be spread out all over the place. And that's exactly what happened. What happened in your slavery? Everyone in America bought you. You were servants everywhere. Everybody bought you. Doesn't match the prophecy. Egypt is not America. Doesn't work. Yet we fulfill it beautifully. Right on the money. Exactly what the prophecy says. We were spread out all over the earth. Not just one land. Not just America. Okay, let's get to the point. Is Israel our land? Were we in Israel before? Or would these liars say, all of you who believe that Israel's not in their land and they were never there before, and they just basically invented the case that they were the Jews and went to the land of Israel? I'm going to prove you wrong right now. Ignatius, the bishop of Antioch, listen carefully. In the first century, this is a century where Jesus existed, in the year 30, 2,000 years ago, in the year 98 to 117 AD, listen to what was said here by the Ignatius. For if we are still practicing, remember, first century, 2,000 years ago, for those of you who say Judaism, where'd you come up with Judaism? You guys came out in the 13th century, invented Judaism, really? For if we are still practicing Judaism in the first century, Judaism, we admit that we have not received God's favor. It is wrong to talk about Jesus Christ and live like Jews, not Hebrew Israelites, Jews. For Christianity, Christianity did not believe in Judaism, but Judaism in Christianity. All right, here we go. Justin Martyr, another one of our great friends. Listen to this. The custom of circumcising the flesh handed down from Abraham was given to you, meaning the Jews, as a distinguishing mark to set you off from other nations and from us Christians here in Europe. You see, we don't come from Europe. We were not welcome here. The purpose of this was that you and only you might suffer the afflictions that are now justly yours, that only your land of Jerusalem and your cities ruined by fire, that the fruits of your land be eaten by stranger, therefore your very eyes will see this, that not one of you be permitted to enter your city of Jerusalem. Again, this is 2,000 years ago about us never being able to go back to Israel. Europe was not our friend. We didn't come from Europe. Let's keep going. Origin of Alexandria. Again, the first to second century. This is 2,000 years ago. Since you guys say, I'm, I'm saying this because you guys are saying that we just popped up a couple hundred years ago. Then stole the land of Israel. I'm already proving that that's nonsense. Right here. Origin of Alexandria. Again, I will leave the details down below so you can look at it for yourself. Origin of Alexandria, 1st century to 2nd century. We must thus assert in utter confidence that the Jews will not return to their earlier situation 
of being in their own land of Israel, namely Jerusalem, for they have committed the most abominable of crimes in forming this conspiracy against our Savior of the human race. Hence, the city of Jerusalem where Jesus suffered was necessarily destroyed and the Jewish nation, Jewish nation, was driven from its own country and another people's were called by God to be the blessed elect. Isn't that lovely? Yes, Jewish people, 2,000 years ago. This is what our lovely friends in Europe were saying about us. Why would they say this? This is not compliments. These are vile, disgusting. There's more stuff too. I'll leave it below. You can see the nasty stuff they wrote about us. Nothing friendly. This is not whitewashed. This is hatred, anti-Semitic statements. John Christensen, in 344, the 3rd century, and the 4th century. Again, over a 1,000 years old. The synagogue is worse than a brothel. It's a den of scoundrels and a place of wild beasts, the temple of demons devoted to idolatrous things, the refuge of brigands and debauchees, and the cavern of devils. It is a criminal assembly of Jews, a place of meeting for the assassins of Christ. He goes on and on. A dwelling place of a drinking shop, a den of thieves, a house of ill-famed, a dwelling of iniquity, a refuge of devils, a gulf, and an abyss of perdition. I would say the same things about their souls, but as for me, I hate the synagogue, I hate the Jews for the same reason. They may never return to their land again. All right, St. Augustine from the 3rd to 4th century, again, over a thousand years ago. How hateful are to me the enemies of your scripture. Oh, how I wish I would slay them, the Jews, with your two-edged sword, so that there should be none to oppose your word. Gladly I would have them die to themselves than to live to you. All right. Lastly, Martin Luther says these words. To sum it up, everyone, my dear nobles, who have Jews in your domain, who for these 1,400 years, this is written in the year 1543, for these 1,400 years now, have been and still are our plague and our pestilence and our misfortune who were thrown out of their land and driven to our land. What land is that? Europe. Anyways, I can go on and on. I'll leave more in the description. But there you go. Our lovely friends in Europe. For those of us, for those of you who say that we come from Europe, it's nonsense. You need to wake up and do some real research instead of theories and fake evidence. Now, let's go on to the so-called so DNA evidence. I'm going to make this very, very clear so that this doesn't get confused anymore because I'm really getting tired of hearing this over and over and over again. Here we go. This is to those of you who believe still that the DNA evidence E-B, I'm sorry, E-1-B-1-A, if you look at a map, E-1-B-1-A -E is African American lineage. It leads to the African Horn, not the Levant Corridor. The Levant Corridor, if you look at a map, which I've done, and you can do too, shows the lands of Israel. If your DNA does not match that, you're not originally the original Israelite, period. Levant Corridor, look at the map. All these Hebrew Israelites were claiming E1B1A is their DNA are already proving themselves false. But they are not the originals. It leads to the Horn of Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, and so forth. Another thing the Torah states over and over is that when Israel, real Israel, is in the land of Israel, that the land itself will give forth its produce and its fruit and will be fruitful in the land. The land itself, not the people, the land. While the Israelites were not in their land, the place became desolate. Well, we were gone for those 2,000 years, almost 2,000 years. Yes, the land was basically a wasteland, completely. 
So as soon as we came back, the land began to produce fruits and is the most productive land ever, still to this day. So again, you know, we have proof here. Again, Leviticus chapter 26, verses 32 through 33. So devastated will I leave the land that your enemies who live there will be astonished. Your land will remain desolate and your cities ruined. Mark Twain wrote about this. He says he visited in 1867. He describes the land of Israel as so. We traveled many miles of desolate country whose soil is rich enough but is given solely to weeds. It's silent, mournful expanse, a desolation here. Not even to the imagination can grace with the comp of life and action. The further we went, the hotter the sun got, the more rocky and bare, repulsive and dreary the landscape became. Others make similar observations. For example, Alphonse de la Martine said, Outside the walls of Jerusalem, however, I saw no living being. Heard no living voice. We encountered the desolation and that deadly silence which we would have expected to find in the ruined gates of Pompeii. A total eternal dread spell envelops the city, the highways and the villages, the burial grounds of an entire people. It goes on to say, in uh, Professor Sir John William said in 1888, Until today, no people has succeeded in establishing national dominion in the land of Israel. No nationality, remember this is 1888 before Israel returned in 1948. The mixed multitude and tribes that managed to settle there did so on lease as temporary residents. It seems like they await the return of the permanent residents to Israel. So, Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 1 through 5 states that we would return to our land. And that's exactly what happened. And that the lost tribes would come together. And that's what we're seeing before our very eyes. People are returning. Our brothers from Ethiopia, the Samaritans, are proving that they are Israelites. They never left the land, by the way. Samaritans are the one people that could say who the true Jews are. They never left the land. Now they have a museum proving that they have 127 consecutive generations in the land of Israel. They know who the real Jews are. Now, what is the bottom line? What is the bottom line of this video? The bottom line is this. It's time to stop the lies and the nonsense. It's time to come to real Israel. Real Israelite faith with love and care. God is about love. The color of your skin does not determine your dedication to Elohim. It doesn't matter what color you are. Look around you, the creation. If God cared about color, everything would be dark, brown, or one color yellow or white. And it's not. We have greens, blues, reds, oranges. Look at the rainbow. If that's not an example that color doesn't matter to God, I don't know what is. Read Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel chapter 1 says the glory around God's brilliance was the colors of the rainbow. Read it for yourselves. I didn't put it there. Around his actual aura of God, the rainbow. We are all children of Elohim. The only thing the Israelites are here to do, real Israelites, like myself and others who are real Israelites, is to be a light to the nations, to teach the nations about the one and only God of Israel. That's what we're here to do, to be a light, to be there for them. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23 says in the end of days, for those of you Hebrew Israelites that believe in the whole slavery thing, the nations are not getting part of what you're getting, you're wrong. You're not based on scripture. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. In those days, the end of days, 10 people out of every nation will grab the clothing of a Jew, not a Hebrew Israelite, a Jew, and say, take us with you, for now we know that God is with you. Yes, they're going to come to the Jewish people to learn. And we have been seeing that in the last several decades. This was unheard of all through history. Yet in the last couple decades, finally, Christians, Messianics, and all peoples are being curious and coming to us, the Jewish people, to learn. And even you, Hebrew Israelites, are learning from us, although you don't want to admit it. You're using our Torahs, 
our books, our Tanakhs, our symbols, our everything. You want to be us so bad. The nations are coming to the light of the Torah, whether for good or for evil. The Torah predicted this, that the nations would despise you. We, the Jewish people, have suffered hatred and persecution nonstop since the beginning of time. Nonstop. And it's even growing even more so. The fact that there are Hebrew Israelites is proving even more so that we are the people. Because it's more hatred, more anti-Semitism, more hate for Israel. We are the suffering servant. Join real Israel. Stop the nonsense. Do real research. Study the scriptures in context. Stop cherry picking and parachuting down. That's not the way you study. That is not the way you study scripture. And all of you using these fake Hebrew names that don't exist. It's not even real Hebrew. Learn Hebrew. Come to real Israel. Humble yourselves. Because people who are not humble will not inherit the kingdom. Read Proverbs chapter 9. God is against the vile and the wicked of the mouth. He is against them. It's time to follow the truth. and Follow the Torah, which is about love. The most important thing about the Torah, if you read Isaiah, the first chapter, read the whole chapter, it is a wake-up call. I'll let you read it and see what it says. It doesn't matter how much Torah you keep, how much mitzvot you think you keep. If you see the end of the chapter, he says, I don't care about your sacrifices, your prayers, your this, your that. If you neglect the orphan, the widow, the strangers, mistreat people, neglect justice and righteousness. I'm going to cover my eyes and not listen to you. It's time to get right. It's time to get right. We are Israel. And we will continue to stand by the truth of our Elohim. Blessed be his name forever and ever. Amen.